Welcome back to another day in Singapore. We are at Jurong Bird Park today. Jurong Bird Park is the largest bird park in Asia. Now we don't know how many bird parks there are in Asia, but it's the biggest. This bird park is home to more than 20% of endangered birds around the world. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to see some birds that we probably can't see anywhere else. I know you didn't know that, did you? I did not know that. I'm like the Cliff Clavin of bird packs. So we have a lot to see today. We better go get started. Zoos can be a little bit of a controversial topic for visiting them. People feel bad that the animals are in the cages, and I get it. We're animal lovers ourselves. The four parks that we visited while we're here in Singapore are also Singapore's designated wildlife rescue centers, which means that they take in wildlife that's been found injured on the side of the road or in people's backyards or in the parks, and they rehabilitate them and re-release those animals back to their native lands. So when you visit a park like this, you're enabling the local community to support the local wildlife. It seems appropriate that at a zoo known for conservation, that they're also trying to minimize the amount of plastic used. Now just because we're at a bird park doesn't mean that all the birds have to be able to fly. We got penguins here. There is a bird in here that looks like it's three or four feet tall. It is easily one of the biggest birds we've ever seen, and it eats baby crocodiles, among a bunch of other small animals, and it's just standing in the back so still that it looks like it's a statue. It is really unique. Also, its beak looks like it's maybe about a foot long, and it weighs its head down. We don't know that it weighs its head down, but that's what it looks like. So one of the things all of these national parks and zoos that we've been to today and yesterday have in common is they have these uh, areas you're able to walk into, and this one has birds. Uh, yesterday we were able to see some monkeys, butterflies, and wallabies, so that's a lot of fun. All the zoos that we've been at have had an endangerment sort of thermometer that you can see how endangered the animals are. This eagle that we're looking at right now is critically endangered. It takes up the whole sidewalk. <laughs> Look here, up my cat. I don't know what you want me to do. Smart choice. This is bok chor mi, and it's vegetarian style with uh, no chicken <laughs> in it. It looks really good. More noodles. I know I had noodles last night, but they're so good. Mmm. I'm super curious about the no chicken. Like, does no chicken taste like chicken? So many things taste like chicken. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, it is really good. Wait till you see what Bill's having for lunch. What are you having, Bill? It's a very traditional Singapore dish. It's called schnitzel. <laughs> it's a no chicken, I think. No chicken schnitzel with fries and apple and some other stuff, green salad. Looks really good. Bill's also having his new favorite beverage again. 100 plus. All right, give it a try, Bill. All right, so here it goes. Looks really good. It's nice and flaky and juicy. Does it taste like chicken? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. The worker told me to put the last of my noodles into my soup so I could try it both ways. Uh, you can eat this dish either dry or wet, wet meaning with a broth. So I'm going to try the end with the broth. Oh, I really like that. Plus this restaurant actually gave us napkins. Yay! The place that we ate at for lunch is called The Social Kitchen, and it's one of the few locations in Singapore. It's a small chain that started during the pandemic, which is amazing. Their goal is to be the largest provider of jobs, kitchen jobs, for disabled individuals and their caretakers. So if you eat here, not only are you enjoying a delicious vegetarian lunch, but you're also supporting uh, some really great people. So 
If you happen to see one of these locations, we would really recommend it. It's nice to have a break from all the delicious meat in Singapore. here you've got to go to the high flyer show we just went to that and it's fantastic you see all these birds on here there were more birds in the production than you see on this poster and they were flying all over the place and colorful and it just looked like utter chaos Actually, all planned. It was pretty amazing. Check it out. Also, the place that we're standing in right now smells like this weird mix of nuts and coffee and caramel and rum, and we smelled it at the Botanic Gardens as well. And I have to know what this is. If you're from the area or if you know what it is, please, please comment below so that we know. Much like the Butterfly Garden, this is an open area with the birds in it, which means the chances of us getting pooped on are like 100%. Let's go. <laughs> there are 23 different kinds of birds all in this giant space that we're in. So far we haven't been pooped on. <laughs> that area was called the Lori Loft. It was by far the favorite thing that I've done at the bird sanctuary so far. And you might notice that I'm putting my jewelry back on. That is because there are some birds in there who will come and peck the jewelry if it's shiny. So I didn't want to take any chances. So we took them all off. Those birds were beautiful and their songs that they sang were also beautiful but incredibly loud. We filmed a thing or two in there with voice and I'm not even sure you can hear me because the birds were that loud. It was amazing. It was really cool. If you come to this park, make sure you do not miss the Lori Loft. <laughs> Are you trying to cross? Do you want to be with your friends? Oh god, this one's coming from my toes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shaggy bird. Oh, 
coming. Why are they doing that? They love hanging by their beach. What the? <laughs> The waterfall aviary is by far the largest of the ones that we've been to. I mean, there's a whole waterfall inside of it for crying out loud. The whole waterfall aviary is a giant cage. Total Jurassic Park vibes, except birds. Well, the waterfall aviary is about two hectares, says Bill. It's massive. <laughs> it's very big. It really is. Um, and it feels so tranquil in here, unlike the other ones that we were at. But the birds aren't as interesting, I think. I think I really prefer the ones that are so colorful. They're so unlike the birds we have back home that I prefer the first one that we went in so far. But again, this one is so tranquil and serene. And the birds are very tame too. They're not really yeah. scared of coming within a couple feet of you. It's pretty amazing. That's for sure. <laughs> thing in here has the coffee smell. Do you recognize it? Actually, it's more nutty than coffee. If you see the plant in this area, it's really strong. Please let me know. Who's gonna save you? Who's gonna make you? Drink it, little guy. My guy doesn't have eyes yet. This is at the Breeding and Research Center, and as you can see, they are feeding some little baby birds. These are sun conures. The birds are so young, they don't have feathers really yet. Or eyes. <laughs> it must be a new boss. So our first bird park, the only one we've been to, what'd you think? One thumbs up, one thumb up. It was pretty neat. It was really interesting. Maybe because we've never been to one before. For me, the best part was actually all the areas where you could interact with the birds. Some of the birds were very tame and would come up to you and uh, others, you know, you had to look for a little bit. Yeah, the bird kennels were really interesting. I think they called them aviaries, right? It was kind of neat that this was included with our park hopper pass, so we got to go to all four parks. And if you haven't seen that video, click the link. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Here's where all the babies come from. Are these storks? These are pelicans. Damn it!